Go is, um, is a very ancient game. Um, it's probably the most complex game humans play. There's more configurations of the board than there are atoms in the universe. In the game of Go, we need this amazingly complex intuitive machinery, which people previously thought was only possible within the human brain, to even have an idea of who's ahead and what the right move is that we should play there. So our program um, combines lots of different techniques together, and uh, for the first time ever, uh, AlphaGo, our program, uh, beat a professional player at Go on uh, even stones, uh, so no handicap on a full-sized Go board. So I played chess um, from very young and that was my first game that I fell in love with. But then when I got to Cambridge and doing my undergrad there, there was a very strong go club at Cambridge with very active players, um, lots of mathematicians. It seems to appeal to mathematicians, the game. Demis was a very, very strong game player. He's uh, a child prodigy and one of the strongest chess players in the world. And it was very important to uh, some people in the company that we could actually beat Demis at something and I decided that the game of Go was my only chance because Demis didn't really know the game at that time. From then on I fell in love with the game and since then um, I've always thought it would be a great challenge for um, computers to be able to play such an aesthetic game, an intuitive game like Go, a much greater challenge than it was to play chess. Go is a game for two players. It's a game of perfect information, so there's no luck, there's no hidden moves or anything. And the game is played by black and white take it in turns to place moves. They place moves on the board, but the stones, once placed, do not move. But a stone can be captured. And stones are captured by completely surrounding them. White is now threatening to capture a black stone by playing here and completely surrounding it. And the ultimate objective is to control more than 50% of the board. If you look at the board, there are hundreds of different places that this stone can be placed down and hundreds of different ways that white can respond to each one of those moves hundreds of ways that black can respond in turn to white's moves, and you get this enormous search tree um, with hundreds times hundreds times hundreds of possibilities. And in fact, the search space of Go is too enormous and too vast for brute force approaches to have any chance of succeeding. And as a result, AI researchers have to turn to more interesting approaches than brute force search, which are perhaps more human-like in the way that they deal with the position. It's a very intuitive game, so if you ask a great Go player, um, how it is that they decided on a move, they'll often tell you it felt right. Um, so these things are generally computers are not great at. The key to AlphaGo is the deep neural networks that we use under the hood. So in fact, in AlphaGo, there are two different neural networks. The first neural network is something we call the policy network. We also have a second neural network, which we call the value network. And the way that AlphaGo uses them is to reduce the enormous complexity of the search tree down to something more manageable. So instead of having to consider hundreds of different moves at each uh, step of the search, it just considers maybe a handful of promising moves that are suggested by this policy network. The value network we use to reduce the depth of the search. So instead of having this enormously deep search that has to go all the way down to perhaps 300 moves all the way to the end of a game, what we do is we search to some modest depth of perhaps 20 moves and then we evaluate that position without playing all the way to the end of the game to say who is going to win in that position. The search process itself um, is not based on brute force, it's based on something more akin to imagination. We um, evaluate our programs internally against themselves and we have an estimate of how strong they are, um, but we don't know for sure until we test it against a top uh, human professional. And uh, so it was very exciting when we invited Fan Hui to come in, the current European champion, to come and play AlphaGo. Um, we weren't sure uh, who was going to win. To be quite honest, I expected AlphaGo to, uh, I expected it to lose. Um, albeit not, not by much. I was therefore very interested and slightly surprised, I will admit, when uh, AlphaGo did as well as it did, and all credit to it. In the end, um, 
you know, AlphaGo won 5 0, and, um, you know, it was stronger than perhaps we were expecting. So we've beaten Fan Hui, the European champion. Now we have to go and demonstrate that we can beat the world's top players, not just the European top player. Um, so we're actually going to be playing a match in March against Lee Seedol, who is the greatest player of modern times. He's won more championships than any other player in the last decade. And he has accepted a challenge to play AlphaGo. And we're quietly confident, but again, who knows what will happen. I would put my money probably on the human, but I wouldn't put lots of money on the human. Humans have weaknesses. They get tired when they play a very long match. They can play mistakes. They, they are not able to make the precise tree-based computation that a computer can actually perform. And perhaps even more importantly, humans have a limitation in terms of the number of actual Go games that they're able to process in a lifetime. A human perhaps can play a thousand games a year. AlphaGo can play through millions of games every single day it's at least conceivable that, as a result, AlphaGo could, given enough processing, given enough training, given enough search power, reach a level that's beyond any human. Um, most games are fun and were designed because they're microcosms of some aspect of life, and uh, they're maybe slightly constrained or simplified in some way, um, but that makes them the sort of perfect challenge for us as a stepping stone towards building um, you know, general artificial intelligence. We're very excited about what the future holds, um, both in terms of Google applications. You can imagine within Google actually taking um, our interactions with our many users at Google to try and optimize how we interact with them. In addition, we'd like to consider tasks beyond that, perhaps moving into medicine one day where we'll be able to help patients personalize their treatment by actually using reinforcement learning to understand which sequences of treatments actually lead to the best outcomes for those individual patients based on their particular track record and history. Have you played AlphaGo? <laughs> In the early days of AlphaGo, I played against it, um, but it was quickly apparent that AlphaGo was way beyond my skill level. I've not played AlphaGo myself, I'm not strong enough, but I've, I've played through many of the games. I did play Matty and Alpha Go when I was first introduced to the game. And did you win? No. <laughs> <laughs>